There's Flockhart's Jaguar, now well in the lead. Where's the great Italian challenge? One by one, the Ferraris and Maseratis have been dropping out, in spite of all the resources of their big factory organizations, and it's the British cars which are proving their stamina. Thank you for this generous look back into what many consider to be the golden age of British motor racing. I presume as director of motorsport you were all rather pivotal in the recruitment effort. Tell us a little about how you picked those drivers. Well, drivers weren't the issue, you see. We had plenty of drivers. It was the good mechanics that were hard to come by. The latter part of the 56 season was spent travelling up and down the country interviewing candidates for the 57 campaign. Of course, every young lad that year wanted a shot at the top level. Browns Lane was bombarded with applications. Kids telling me whose cars they'd worked on, who their father was. God, I hated it. Funny how life works sometimes.
opinion, the value of good timing cannot be underestimated. You can have everything else in place, everything else going for you. If the timing is off, it just won't work. Of course, you can work to be in the right place at the right time, with the right attitude and desire. As fickle as time can be, I still believe those who deserve to be there will be there when it counts. No matter the odds against them. He took the job, of course. Starting that year with a 1-2-3 at Le Mans. Not a bad way to start one's motorsport career. First, second, third, fourth and sixth. Ten British cars in the first 12. One of the biggest national triumphs in car racing history. Nothing on lucky man.